So, welcome back students. So, we continue with module 2. In the previous lecture, we have seen the generation of syngas from uh, steam reforming primarily through methane. So, here methane and natural gas was the starting material or the starting reactant. Uh, this particular lecture continues with that the production of syngas, but from coal. So, overall this process is called coal gasification. So, what we will cover in the coal gasification? We will primarily cover what are the gasification reactions involved for to gasify the coal. Then uh, the thermodynamics of the process like if I have the increased what is the effect of increased amount of pressure or if it is a reducing atmosphere is oxidizing atmosphere. So, now there is a difference when we did the previous lecture we discussed the gasification of methane by steam reforming our primary aim was to only produce syngas. It is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen then whatever you want to do you can do with the syngas whether you want to produce alcohol some intermediate or a bulk chemical that is the further end product. But in the gasification of coal our primary aim is to make the entire coal in the gaseous state. So, when you burn the coals or you do a steam reforming of the coal you get a gaseous phase and a solid phase. A solid phase you must be all be aware that is known as char. So, the char is the part which is solid and the gaseous and the gaseous will contain the gaseous phase shall contain syngas as the primary component along with there may be other gases. So, that is the difference between steam reforming of natural gas or steam reforming of coal. Then we will see what is autothermal and allothermal process. Now, autothermal process means uh, you are uh, providing the energy. So, there are some endothermic reaction, some exothermic reactions. So, whatever heat you require for endothermic that is obtained by the exothermic reaction that is autothermal. Allothermal process implies you are producing heat or you are supplying heat from outside. So, for the endothermic process to proceed you are providing heat from outside that is you send the air and fuel mixture you burn it, you get the fuel and then you put that fuel to drive the endothermic reaction. So, so this is what I want to just need to talk about the syngas. So, syngas production is the major product from the coal. It is a byproduct obviously as I told you it is can be the byproduct or the main product of coal gasification as well as natural gas. Now, the motivations are just now I have explained behind the two processes are distinct. In coal gasification is defies to turn coal into a gas. Now, this gas may be carbon monoxide, hydrogen, methane, ethylene, anything or some may be some intermediate. So, primarily consisting of I will say carbon monoxide and hydrogen while steam reforming produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen only for chemical use because coal gasification and steam reforming difference is steam reforming is not used for power generation. Now, in this case coal gasification can also be used for power generation because you are generating a syngas and you are actually generating a gaseous mixture. The gaseous mixture actually it is hot, so it can drive the gas turbine. So, if the if it drives the gas turbine it means it is generating electricity. So, you can also produce chemicals, you can also generate electricity. So, that is a two fold motive here. So, from coal if you want to see what are the uses, what are the gases where they are used. So, gases 32 percent of the gases which are formed they are used as raw material in the chemical industry, 11 percent of the gases are used to generate electricity, 8 percent they may be used as gas fuels well directly let us say syngas, a syngas well it comes later but gaseous fuels such as methane you may get or ethylene these are also um, important gases which are used say let us say for gas cutting application all those or you can convert these gases to the aromatics that has BTX, benzene, toluene, xylene. So, these are the uses of the gaseous fuels. The remaining 49 percent is syngas is usually to manufacture fischer troughs liquid. So, we will see in the later modules how this fischer troughs process is manipulated to produce either alcohols or you can also produce alkanes. So, all these things happens with the starting material as syngas. Now, this is an important the remaining I mean if you are just add these two up then remaining gases can also be used as a coal gasification media in an IGCC. I will take this up in a later lecture in the same module. This is known by integrated gasification combined cycle. This what it does is it produces gas and it also produces power. 
that's why the term gas to power is known. It means it refers to a system in which gasification is used to fuel a gas turbine. You produce gas, use the gasification to fuel a or power a gas turbine which then drives a steam turbine that generates electricity. So, it is called gas to power application. This is the primary one of the gal coal gasification and you must be aware that so many thermal power plants are in, in India, they will generate both gas as well as the power. So, what is gasification reaction? So, when you have a mixture of oxygen and water, so water means steam. So, if you do a combustion or you do a reforming, so steam reforming when it is in the presence of water, combustion means when it is the presence of oxygen. So, combustion of a part of the coal produces the heat needed for heating up the reaction temperature. So, what is the amount of heat you generate from combustion? So, if you know combustion are exothermic reactions, so you are generating heat. So, that the heat you generate, it is used for two purpose. First is to provide the energy for the endothermic reactions in the coal gasification and second is to preheat the reaction mixture before they enter the coal gasifiers. Now, these coal gasifiers also are of various types, we will explain that in the subsequent lecture in the same module. So, let us write down what are the equations if you just gasify coal. Now, in this case we will assume coal to be coke that is just for simplification, we will assume it to be using the nomenclature carbon C. So, what are the reactions involved? C. The reactions involved will be homogeneous as well as heterogeneous. So, you have the uh, homogeneous reactions, so, let us see the heterogeneous reaction first, coal because coal is a heterogeneous mixture. So, you have the heterogeneous reactions, the most common reaction is this is the coal, so carbon reacts with steam that is water, so it is a reversible reaction, it will form CO plus H2, so it forms syngas as the product. So, uh, if I write down this is the delta H, what is the enthalpy change? The enthalpy change whether it is exothermic or endothermic. So, I will write down enthalpy change at this temperature 800 Kelvin okay, in kilojoules per mole, kilojoules per mole. Okay. So, this is close to 136 pretty high, so it is endothermic reaction, this is called steam reforming of coal. Now, there is another reaction which is possible because you may have this carbon dioxide generated from the homogeneous reaction which we will talk about later. So, it may form carbon monoxide. Again this is your endothermic. So, how where does this CO2 come to the picture? We will discuss when we discuss homogeneous reactions. Right now, it is heterogeneous reaction because the CO2 which is generated in the homogeneous reaction take part in a heterogeneous reaction. Okay. So, now some other reactions, but the other reactions are all as you know side reactions, the side reactions are something like that. You can also have the coke getting oxidized directly from the oxygen to form carbon monoxide okay. or you the carbon or the coke can directly convert and form CO2. So, these are all exothermic, so it is highly exothermic minus 222 this is minus 394 and finally, the last expression or the last major side reaction which may be possible is when the coal combines with hydrogen to form methane. Now, methane is a desired product if you are wanting the methane as a gaseous fuel. So, in this case it is minus 87. So, now you see what are the two endothermic reactions? The first two, these are the endothermic reactions. So, if you look the reactions very closely, you have more number of molecules okay, on the right hand side. So, if you apply Le Chatelier's principle, it means carbon monoxide, hydrogen both are in gaseous state, but here this carbon is in solid state. So, you do not take the gaseous molecules, I will take only for water vapor that is steam. So, if you more number of molecules are in the product side than in the reactant side. So, these processes are favored at low pressure. So, the conversion will be higher at low pressure okay, for steam reforming. Now, what are the homogeneous reactions possible?
there may be other also reactions, but I am writing the major reactions which are possible. So, these are all available in your book, the textbook which we are following, the Moulin's book. So, it is 2 CO plus O2 will give 2 CO2. Again, this is highly exothermic minus 572 or carbon monoxide can also combine with steam and it can form CO2 plus H2. So, this reaction CO plus is called the water gas shift reaction, okay. it is mildly exothermic. So, now you better understand where does this carbon dioxide come. So, this carbon dioxide is actually taking part in the hydrogenous reaction because there is coal present. So, it will always react with coal if the temperature is high and it will form carbon monoxide. And then you may also find where you get this hydrogen. So, now you need the presence of hydrogen comes from this homogeneous reaction because hydrogen produced in this homogeneous reaction is used up with carbon that is coal to produce methane. So, that is the way both this heterogeneous and reactions and homogeneous reactions are clubbed together. Okay. These are the major reactions. Now, please remember these major reactions are what we are representing, the remaining reactions we are not following because it is impossible because it is a complex mixture, there may be many other reactions possible. For the time being, we will consider these are the major reactions. So, endothermic reactions are the first two. So, what happens if you gasify coal? So, you have coal, if you gasify, does it directly convert to gasify in one single step? That is our question. No, it does not does so, it does so in steps. So, it has a pathway. So, it will there will be some primary reactions, then uh, intermediate formation, then radical formation, then radical stabilization. Then finally, if you keep those radicals at prolonged temperature for a long period of time, then they will be converted to thin gas. That is how it goes about. Other than thin gas, there are other gases also formed. So, what it does is so, coal as we know is an intricate blend of mineral and chemical components. So, first when you take up coal, thermal cracking occurs. What is thermal cracking? You have lots of rings within the coal, polyaromatic or multi polyaromatic rings. There may be heteroatoms such as sulphur, nitrogen. Then what happens is when you have the heat given at a very fast rate, they will break they will break into smaller components. That is the first step. So, it is a thermal cracking just by heaving heat you break those into small components. So, these will occur when heated to a reaction temperature. Now, see the reaction temperature is around 1000 to 2000 Kelvin, very high temperature. Now, when this happens after that if you keep those at such high temperatures, okay, keep those at such high temperatures then this organic matter will obviously melt because they may not go up as a gaseous material they may melt. Some of those which are gaseous, they may evolve out and the remaining will form as a solid. So, this is what happens. So, you have the gases which are going up. It may be hydrogen, methane, aromatics, carbon monoxide like that. But on extended heating, what happens? These gases are further stabilized and the organic matter transform into what we know as char. So, char is a porous substance resembling graphite and the process is called pyrolysis. Okay. So, you keep on hitting, finally you will have solid phase, then liquid phase and finally again solid phase which is called char. So, char is you know as a condensation reaction, a polymerization reaction it becomes very hard matter and so you have a hard matter on one side and other the gaseous effluent on the other side. So, in the presence of reactive gases, so when you have when you heat the coal, you have the reactive gases, multiple successive reactions occur just now what I have repeated. This is true for coal combustion. In a combustor, coal particles that enter the flame, when you do a combustion, the coal particles, they enter the flame and rapidly heated. So, see the heating rate, 10,000 Kelvin per second, heating rate I am talking about. Then you keep at 2000 Kelvin, but initially they have to be rapidly heated, so that you uh, obtain immediate paralysis. So, the products are almost entirely burned, but when you have less than stoichiometric quantities of oxygen, so the atmosphere is reducing. Okay. So, that is what we do, we send a less amount of oxygen, it is called as coal gasification. So, outcome is a complicated combination of various organic molecules. Okay. 
So, these are the steps. So, I will just describe them in the form of a figure that is the pyrolysis network. Now, what is this pyrolysis network? Let us see what are these pyrolysis networks. Now, let us say you have coal here. Now, coal I know you know I am not making it, but it may some type of this compound you know you have these groups OH, then uh, I'm, it is a representation compound, okay. Then you may have SH, then, then all these compounds, so, so these are extended in several directions, okay. So, very complex structure. So, you may have uh, let us say CH2 grouping or you may have OH grouping that which I just shown or you may have sulphur, sulphur SH group. Mainly all this may be combined in the terms of polyaromatic hydrocarbon. So, this is what you call as the coal material. So, now what you do? You do a thermal decomposition. So, you increase the temperature in such a manner that the temperature rises very fast. Thermal decomposition occurs. Now, after thermal decomposition occurs, there is a formation of radicals basically. So, what are the radicals we are talking about? Let us say this is one such radical I am making. So, let us say this is a phenoxy type radical. So, you have methyl group here. So, you have this and then you may have oxygen, oxy and oxide or you may have this sort of reaction happening. You have CH2 radical formation or you may have this sort of structure. You may be having a CH2 in a different position with the lone pair on oxygen or you may also have this H2S gas, hydrogen sulphide gas or you may also have polyaromatic ring. So, this is uh, extensive. I have not drawn all the structures. Several such structures are possible isomers. So, we call this phase, we call it as a formation of radicals. After the composition, this call is formation of radicals. See, the radicals is formed. Okay. Now, what you do is then if I draw a network like this, if I just separate these radicals, then there are several pathways. See, what happens is they may polymerize or they may condense. Either they can polymerize or they may condense to form the what we called as the char material. Okay. So, the char material is something like this. I will not draw because it is a structure it is not possible to represent here. But a char material can also give up carbon monoxide and hydrogen continuously from it because it is not stable. So, they may all polymerize and condense to form char material. So, it is very difficult. So, you can understand the char material is actually when you have fused rings together. But you can also generate hydrogen and carbon monoxide getting generated from the char. This is a solid part, solid. Now, what happens if it does not polymerize or condense? Then the radicals get stabilized. So, you can have another pathway. So, we call this the stabilization of radicals. If this is not true, so what happens actually is uh, both this process. Sorry, I should have written it. Radicals, stabilization of radicals. So, in the stabilization of radicals, what we are having is you have some other compounds getting formed from this stabilization of radicals. So, what is this compounds? Primarily, primarily you will have the syn gas getting formed, CO plus H2. Okay. So, now when this is formed, you have other radicals also, but in these radicals now will be stabilized into some compounds. Now, further compounds are formed. For example, I will draw some of the compounds which are possible. You have this sort of structure. Okay. Or you may also have sulfur compounds. I am drawing one sulfur compound. 
or you may also have something which is the phenoxy group getting stabilized let us say the O1 oxygen getting stabilized and uh, let us say you form this type of structures. Okay. Now, these type of structures will be formed when it is stabilized. So, they will convert into some compounds. Now, what happens is you do not stop here. So, what you do you keep that ex into exposure to extended temperature, extended exposure to temperature. You keep that for a longer period of time these compounds what happens is this coal first radical formation then compound formation extended exposure to temperature what will happen is you will have secondary gas phase reactions okay you will have the secondary gas phase reactions okay so when you have the secondary gas phase reaction what compounds are you supposed to get? You may get a number of compounds because then it gets stabilized. You may have this acetylene molecule, you may have acetylene molecule, you may have the syngas formation CO plus H2 although they are separate but I am combining them just to make sure to syngas or you may also form these compounds that as benzothiophene. Okay. Then uh, you may have this type of also compounds available. Then there, they may also form such uh, other compounds such as you have this fused ring compounds. So, it is look similar to one furan or dioxin we have taken up in module 1. So, something like that. So, these are compounds which are getting generated. Okay. So, these are what we called as volatile products. Volatile products. So, this actually completes the process. So, you have three stages. First is thermal decomposition, stabilization radicals, and secondary gas phase reactions. So, then there are two pathways either to stabilize the radicals and then there is polymerization and condensation. So, both the stabilization as well as the polymerization or condensation will go in sync with each other. Thereafter, we have a secondary gas phase reactions. So, this is the final product what you are having is CO and H2 is primary these are all gaseous products getting formed from the coal gasification and this entire process is called pyrolysis network. So, moving ahead. So, that is what just I want to repeat what I have just now discussed. So, we have used coal as carbon and the gas phase contains the following elements methane, hydrogen. So, the gas phase along with those aromatic compounds it will also have this following gases in a huge amount that is steam, carbon monoxide, dioxide, hydrogen, methane because just now I have shown from the reactions endothermic and exothermic reactions. Other hydrocarbons just now which I drew in the previous slide are present but their concentration are quite low. So, in our case we have represented it by methane. Okay. So, now what we do we will see how these products are varying. So, we have seen a complicated pyrolysis network, but we are going to assume that the gases are primarily carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, steam, oxygen, hydrogen, methane. These are the gases we will take up as products to make it simplify. Then in the next slide what we will discuss two things. First we will see what are the products how do they vary the equilibrium composition resulting from gasification of coal in an equimolar mixture of steam as a function of temperature and pressure because I already told you pressure means lower the pressure higher will be the conversion because you have more number of molecules in the product side gaseous molecules in the product side. So, you have lowered the pressure higher the conversion. So, three things are existing here endothermic reaction, exothermic reaction, effect of pressure we will see these effects one by one. So, let us see the allothermal process. Allothermal means when heat is given from outside. Okay. So, let us draw this allothermal how these gases vary. So, what I do is as I told you in the previous case it is an equilibrium mixture of all the gases. So, what will happen with the gases? So, in the y axis the y axis 
I will draw the composition. Okay of all the gases. So, I will just say which one is which gas that I will say and this is temperature in Kelvin. Okay. So, well I will not show below 600 nothing happens. So, 600 let us say this is 1000 then 1400 then 1800. Okay. So, now Composition, well, I can say here composition is 100 percent as 1, that is 80 percent, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0. Okay. So, it is the composition of the gases and the, this is the temperature, the gasification temperature. This is allothermal. Allothermal means all heat given from outside only steam is there fine only steam is there heat given from outside. So, now what happens? So, see for uh, uh, this hydrogen will be generated. So, this will be the hydrogen concentration. Now, what does this mean? If I write like this hydrogen almost 60 percent composition will be hydrogen. So, it means this endothermic reaction is taking place because see as you increase the temperature conversion that is the production of hydrogen increases. So, it means which temperature which particular reaction is happening. So, reaction which is happening is C plus H 2 O will give C O plus H 2. So, this is your endothermic reaction. So, I write here endo, I am not write the absolute figures how much it is endothermic, but it is endothermic. So, it means as you increase temperature your conversion will increase. Now, fine this is ok, this is at 1 bar pressure. So, this is 1 bar pressure. What happens if it is at 30 bar pressure? It will follow something like this. So, this is so, if I if I write down here, uh, I mean uh, I can just write down here. So, this is I will say it is 30 bar and this is 1 bar. So, now you see as I told you the conversion decreases with increased pressure. So, you see at any instant of time when you have taken temperature, you have more amount of hydrogen getting produced at lower pressure as compared to higher pressure. So, this is about hydrogen. What about the other gases? Let us say I talk about methane. Okay. Now, methane will go something like this, say if I something like this methane. Now, methane formation if you remember this is the reaction. So, C plus 2 H 2 is equal to methane. Now, if you remember carefully so, this is an exothermic reaction. So, you can see, so it had some maxima. Well, with that maxima, it slowly reduced with temperature because it is an exothermic reaction. As you increase temperature, its conversion decreases. So, methane and hydrogen we are showing here. So, it is goes down in this manner. Okay. So, it means you have methane. Now, what happens if you have a higher pressure? Now, then what it is? it will be showing something like this. So, at higher pressure, at higher pressure, so exothermicity will be there, the maxima of the methane production will shift to higher temperature, that is all the difference you will get if you compare with lower pressure. Because there are two things here happening, one is the exothermicity of the reaction, another is the endothermicity of the conversion. Due to that the maxima of the methane production will shift to a higher temperature when you conduct the experiment at higher pressure. So, this was about methane and hydrogen. Now, let us see what are the other gases. So, again I will draw two axes, one is the um, temperature and uh, let us say this is again 1800. I will use the same scale as I drew in the last slide, this is 1000. 
and this is let us say 600, well the scale may not be exact, but you may understand. So, 1, this is let us say 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 ok. So, now let us see this is temperature in Kelvin and this is again the composition. So, I write composition, it means it is composition of the gases. Now, what happens with carbon monoxide? Same thing. This is CO. Again, this CO is the same, it is due to the endothermic reaction. Now, here there are two endothermic reactions basically. One is steam reforming, another is when you have the it reacts with the carbon dioxide from homogeneous reaction to form more of CO. So, both this reaction is endothermic. So, as you see as the temperature increases, its conversion rises and it becomes a minimum. Then what do you expect at high pressure? Again at high pressure, if I want to do at 30 bar, the conversion decreases. So, again I just write here. So, which one is which? Otherwise, it will be confusing. This is at 30 bar, this is at 1 bar. Okay. Now, your conversion decreases with pressure because you see you have more number of molecules. In this case, you have two molecules here, one molecule here, you have two molecules here, one molecule in the reactant side. So, as you increase pressure, conversion decreases. So, that is what we get dotted line. Now, what about the other things? Water. Now, water will be something like that because steam, water means steam. So, steam is produced. So, it is steam is consumed basically. So, it is not produced. So, it will go something like this. Okay. Steam is consumed because the same reaction is consumed and again it will be consumed at uh, you know the higher rate when the pressure is increased. So, it, no sorry it will be consumed at a lower rate. So, it means your it will die down slowly with respect to carbon monoxide because at higher pressure less consumption is there. So, it is consumption is less. So, the concentration of steam will be less for this is a composition not conversion. So, please keep in mind. So, the composition of the steam decreases appreciably while that of CO increases with pressure so, the, or inverse proportion, inversely proportional. Now, what about the other gases? The same thing for CO2 also. CO2 also same thing what you get is uh, you have a uh, this if I want to draw like this, this is CO2 I hope. So, you have uh, this CO2 formation, if you notice, it is all exothermic in nature. So, you have carbon plus oxygen to produce CO2, this is exo. So, again, if it is exothermic in nature, so it means the maxima will only shift, okay. The maxima will only shift at higher pressure. So, at higher pressure, the maxima is only shifting. Other things remain same because I told you at higher pressure, you have the endothermicity and the exothermicity, but here it is exothermic reaction, but the selectivity is endothermic. So, that is why as you increase the temperature, it is less less selective. So, it is more takes more time to decrease. That is why at higher pressure, it decreases slowly as compared to lower pressure. This is about the allothermal process. So, what are the key points? So, the key points that we got from this is that the for the endothermic H2O gasification reaction, the carbon monoxide and hydrogen mole percentages increases as the temperature rises, steam drops as temperature increases as a result of the exothermicity of the formation and the endothermicity of their conversion. So, exothermic is due to the conformation and endothermic is of the selectivity, the conversion. Both CO2 and CH2 experience a maximum, but they shift, but they shift to a higher temperature when you have higher pressure. Due to the increased quantity of molecules, a low pressure is beneficial for CO and H2. As pressure increases, the maxima of CO and CH2 migrate to higher temperature. Okay? So, this is what the key points. Now, let us see the autothermal process. So, what happens in the autothermal process? Same thing, but exactly same trend. Only issue is here we are producing oxygen from outside. So, when you are giving oxygen from outside, it means Earlier it was only one atom of oxygen in the steam. Now you are having three atoms of oxygen. So the, the, the products you will have more of CO, less of H2. 
more of carbon monoxide less of H2 owing to the higher concentration of oxygen. If I again draw this figure, this is the temperature in Kelvin. So, you have 600 Kelvin here, 1000, then you have 1400, then 1800 and again this is the composition. So, let us suppose this is 100 percent composition, 80 percent composition, 60, 40 and 20. So, what happens? For hydrogen, let us see what happens to hydrogen and methane like we did for the previous case. So, same reaction, okay, high temperature endothermic reaction. So, it is C plus H2O okay. again uh, same thing uh, at higher pressure. So, but this is the concentration of H2. Earlier, if you remember, the H2 was somewhere here 0.6. Now, it has decreased owing to the feed composition because feed you are oxygen as well as steam. So, you are supplying more amount of oxygen atoms. So, that is why CO will be produced more. Same similar manner, we have this methane also. You have this methane like this and at higher temperature, it will shift its maxima. So, this is methane is hydrogen. So, the same thing is happening. So, for this it is 1 bar pressure, this is 30 bar. Okay. So, just to remind you that this feed mixture when you are sending H2O and oxygen, it is in stoichiometric quantity. Okay. You are sending this feed mixture in stoichiometric quantity. So, let us see what about the others, carbon monoxide, what happens with that? In the carbon monoxide, a similar trend you will observe, which we observe for allothermal. Only thing is the concentration, relative concentration. Again, you have 1800, 1400, 1000, 600. Well, I am not writing what happens below 600, nothing happens because no conversion is possible. Because if you understand, this is an exothermic reaction. So, now let us see what are the effect at a lower pressure first. Now, the lower pressure, let us draw carbon monoxide. So, the conversion is pretty high, it is almost close to 80 percent for carbon monoxide, which is obviously is a due to this reaction, endothermic reaction, okay. Because of this reaction, carbon monoxide, now you see it is almost 0 0.8, at that time it was 0 0.4 or 0.5 near about. So, amount is increased because of the feed composition. Same thing again, if you increase the pressure because of the molecules, it will go like this. Then uh, water consumption again, uh, you will just die down in this manner. And if you increase the pressure, the consumption will be less. Okay. This is for water and again the CO2 is the same thing. You have this, I again draw like this so that you can understand. So, this is CO2 and I need not repeat that if you increase the pressure, the CO2 will have the maxima shifted at a higher temperature. That is it. Everything remains the same. Okay. So, this is what the difference is from autothermal and allothermal. Here, you are sending a stoichiometric mixture of oxygen and steam. In that case, you are representing only steam. So, what are the key points from this allothermal? Proportion of CO and CO2 are significantly greater than those of H2 and CH4. It was the other way around in autothermal because obvious reason because you have a higher exchange content because you are sending both H2O and O2 both together. So, you have higher lower amount of hydrogen to atom ratio. So, at high temperature this is the reason you get more amount of CO and CO2 as compared to CH4, methane and hydrogen. Now, moving ahead, now reaction enthalpies. So, what are the reaction enthalpy? Reaction enthalpy means like how much energy I require, okay, how much energy I require to convert at least one mole of steam 
So, usually I will consider the reaction enthalpy in terms of endothermic reactions because that is where the main reactions actually are dominating. So, we will see what are the reaction enthalpy, how much energy is required, let us see to consume 1 mole of steam. So, again I will draw a figure, so here what but the axis will be different in this case. See, I will draw here temperature first, six hundred thousand. Okay, and then uh, I will write here a term called as enthalpy change. It will be positive. This is endothermic reaction, so I will write here fifty then 100, then 150, then 200 and 250. So, if I want to write down what is the amount of enthalpy change per mole of, so I will the units I can write down kilojoule of per mole of H2O converted, getting? So, when does 1 mole of H2O converted with temperature, please understand, okay. What our products we are getting, that is forget those things. Now, only how much of the enthalpy or heat I require to convert 1 mole of. So, what I, what you do is, I will just see this from this and uh, we will see just somewhere lies here. So, this is also dependent on pressure, this is for 1 bar pressure. And if I do it at a very high pressure, so it will, so the, you know, the temperature you require is more in this of high pressure because the, it is favored at lower pressure. And now, if you see, if I draw this line, so at this point, when it becomes flat, horizontal, it is said to be self-sustainable means whatever products you are getting is satisfied by the enthalpy that is the steam. So, it means from here if you want to counter this from this autothermal process from the allothermal I would say when you are adding steam you can find out what is the enthalpy required. So, in this case the enthalpy required is 135.5 roughly this is 135.5 this amount of heat I require to convert the entire coal. So, this heat if I can just manage by producing or by taking in oxygen from outside then it becomes autothermal because then the oxygen will have a combustion reaction, the heat produced in the combustion reaction can be taken up by the endothermic reaction. So, this will help us in deciding how much amount of oxygen I need to put with steam. So, this will give us that ratio, what should be the ratio of steam to oxygen. So, let us see what is that ratio. So, now that once we get that, then you can plot the ratio with respect to temperature. So, again I will draw a curve. So, you have a y axis which is the O2 to H2 feed ratio. Okay. Let us say it is 0.6 sorry, I will just maybe I 0 to 0.6, it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 5, okay. Again, you have the temperature, let us suppose we use the normal temperature which we discussed in the previous lectures. So, it is 600, sorry. So, there is some issue. So, I wish just to start at 600 because nothing happens. 600, then 1000, then 1400, then 1800. Temperature in Kelvin. So, now if you see what is the ratio you need so that to be making this, if I want to draw this figure, so it will be something like this. Is that 1 bar? And if you, uh, you will require a lesser ratio if you are conducting at high pressures, 
okay. So this is what it requires. So you may require a close to uh, let us say for the, the ratio becomes almost constant at a higher temperature. It means uh, there the becomes endothermic reactions are dominating. So there is no further conversion. So you should take this type of ratio if you want to compare. So it means you require uh, let us say I will say half of if you are taking oxygen. So uh, you should have half of your mole ratio. So it means O2 to H2O mole ratio should be 1 is to 2 near about. Okay. So, this is what you mean. So, you, you operate it in, uh, no, in allothermal mode, operate it in allothermal mode, you get the amount of enthalpy. With the enthalpies, you can then obtain what should be my oxygen stream to us to make it autothermal. So, allothermal to autothermal, you have to conduct first in steam reforming reaction, get the enthalpy and from there you decide the ratio of oxygen to steam. So let us then uh, summarize what we have studied in this. The change in enthalpy reflects the total change in the reaction enthalpies of all the included reactions. So whenever I have drew that uh, y axis, it is a change of enthalpy of all the reactions taken together. So at 1600 Kelvin, we have just seen around 135 kilojoules per mole are required per mole of H2O converted. So as I told you, enthalpy of the steam general acidification reaction is a dominating reaction at high temperature. That is why it, you know, it reaches a plateau, whether it is molar ratio of O2 to H2O or it is the enthalpy, it is a plateau because that is a dominating effect. So at low temperatures, exothermic processes play a role, but as the temperature rises, endothermic reactions play a larger part resulting in a greater enthalpy change. These enthalpy changes obviously will determine the necessary O2 to H2O ratio for autothermicity to occur. So uh, if you recollect, so it means that when the curve goes like this, so in this region you have the exothermic reaction occurring. But as the exothermic curve proceeds, it becomes higher and higher owing to the endothermic nature of the gasification. That is what the enthalpy change talks about. So enthalpy change talks about means the overall enthalpy change of all the reaction taken together. So at higher temperatures, more oxygen is necessary to compensate. So at higher temperatures, if you see in that diagram of the, I just made now that molar ratio. So it means at higher temp, so temperature, when temperature is high, more oxygen. So more oxygen means this ratio goes up. More oxygen is required to compensate for the energy wasted by the endothermic reactions. So now, because they are coupled, see what happens is combustion will produce energy and this combustion energy is used by endothermic. So you require more of oxygen so as to convert the remaining coal, okay. So that is why these reactions has to be carried out first in steam reforming mode and then finally you get to know what are the autothermicity ratio. So I will conclude here. So you please go through this reference where all the figures are given on the textbook which I have just now taught and uh, from the next class, the next lecture, I will start with what you call is the gasification technology. So I will discuss about the various types of gasifiers which are currently used in industries. Thank you. Mm -hmm.